Uh, hello and welcome to this podcast, uh, Binal. Uh, I have no clue what you do and uh, what your background is. So let's start with your introduction, please. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, it was an impromptu session. Uh, I was <laughs> uh, Yeah, and Binal, based in Sanes. I uh, vaguely remember to have met you actually at Venoka's place once. Uh, oh. It was this very brief. You had to leave and I had just come in. So I think I've seen you. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, instruction would be that uh, I'm just on this journey of life and uh, reading, trying to read the book of life as it went from moment to moment. And um, I, what do I say? So all my life I've been born and brought up in Thane, then later on, then come to do the conventional job uh, with a the bank. Then, you know, the conveyor belt of sorts, that after job you get married and have kids. So all that has happened. Uh, and uh, here I am. Uh, so I've quit now working. It's been a long time since I've worked. And uh, a nine-year-old, uh, sorry, eleven-year-old child, and uh, mm. learning with them along the way. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I was also wondering what is the question that I could start with. So something very basic uh, and very human. Uh, in the journey you've had so far, uh, quote unquote conventional as you called it. Uh, it has one uh, common thread irrespective of how conventions change over time or place or age or uh, nationhood or whatever, all the basic uh, differences that we all have. One common thing is that we all go through certain experiences that uh, are bound by some kind of grief or uh, some, kind of, some kind of dissatisfaction. So my first question itself is uh, considering that the series is called The Vulnerable Me, how do you look at dissatisfaction or grief? You can give examples or you can give any kind of answer that you are comfortable with. Uh, so you mentioned about grief, is it? I'm hearing Grief, it. grief. And dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. Commonality you're saying that we share irrespective of our various upbringing and all that. So you would want me to share an example of that? Anything, whatever you are comfortable with. When I hear those words? I am uh, losing you some places. Your audio is going off. Okay. So what about grief and uh, uh, sorrow, dissatisfaction rather? What would you want me to share about it? Anything, anything, what are your thoughts on this subject? Um, I feel that whatever grief or sorrow that we come across in life, how are we looking at it? In the sense that are we pointing fingers outside of us that so and so thing happened to me because of XYZ factors or person or circumstance? Or are we uh, looking within and realizing that, uh, yes, what happened on the outside were just triggers for this grief or uh, for the sorrow, but the instrumental person in this is me. So it's more like an inside-out approach where you are looking within as to what within you caused this grief or sorrow. Where did you conclude? rather than uh, pointing fingers elsewhere. So I think whatever happens on the outside is pretty incidental in that sense and you are the instrument. And uh, that makes you, um, on one hand, you are you know, taking onus of your own actions, of your own uh, condition, actually, your own emotions. So it's also liberating. So that particular experience which may seemingly be uh, of grief and uh, of sorrow uh, can also be uh, looked at in a way where you know you take uh, charge of your own self in that sense. Okay. Uh, since grief is a loaded word, I would want to give you a lighter example. 
uh, which is more closer to dissatisfaction of sorts. So I stay in a place which is next to the highway. And uh, very often, once I come outside my uh, society gate uh, driving, there are people driving on the wrong side. And it is very difficult uh, many a time because I am looking on the other side so that because people are moving in my direction already. So people moving against me are mostly unseen in the last moment. And this keeps happening at least because there are cars parked already there and people are coming on the wrong side. So I can't see them. So if, if the normal direction is this, they are coming on this side. And I can't see them. And this happens at least, at least in my experience, my own uh, problem with it is at least six or eight or 10 times a day. And various people of various ages, various backgrounds, uh, sometimes even uh, traffic officials <laughs> uh, land up doing that or police people, I see them doing that. And it is very scary because it just needs one mistake on any of our parts to have an accident there. And it saves them a little time, two minutes or what. But I get irritated very often with this. And I keep talking to myself, the, the idea that you give that I take the onus that there is something within me that is getting hugged by these things. And yet uh, the dissatisfaction with this happening every now and then doesn't go away. Uh, your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I think uh, you brought up a very good point to dissatisfaction on a daily basis that yeah. of the type of life experience that you just quoted right now of, uh, you know, even a simple thing like crossing a road and the recurrent uh, breaking of rules, so to say, yeah. in terms of this. Uh, I look at it this way that, you know, the people who are going, I'm not justifying them, their actions, yes, they are flouting the rules, but one way to look at it would be that you know they are not necessarily doing it with an intention to harm you specifically. It's like they have a certain goal to reach somewhere, uh, save time somewhere. So uh, it's not you know intended to hurt you, but you are you know like the collateral damage in this case. Place <laughs> and um, you are getting. Um, affected by it. So, um, you know, uh, what you could kind of perhaps, you know, look at it is that they have certain, you know, I mean, I'm, for me, getting irritated, I won't be able to change them. You know, nothing is going to, unless they themselves would want to rethink about their actions or how it is. So how is it that their irrationality would affect and make me also irrational? I mean, where is that? Uh, coming from because I have concluded somewhere that you know if bande ne to jaan ke mere upar kiya na kuch to wo to mujhe nahi lagta ki uske man mein aisa kuch hai and the other thing would be that you know you yourself can only force your own actions not go out to do something unless the other person realizes it so that would kind of you know, make that realization itself, you know, may doubt of the irritation, the cause of it, which was your own. Uh, so outside was again the trigger that there is the irrationality happening. Uh, so I'm not justifying that at all, but somewhere within even looking at that, making oneself angry is also uh, questionable. And you are questioning that. If you keep questioning that, what is it that I have you know, um, you know, uh, allowed this to seep in. Uh, why is it? Uh, why am I getting affected? Maybe that would kind of. Uh, yeah. I think so you like me... Look at why am I getting irritated in the first. You've given me one perspective for sure uh, in terms of they may have a valid reason at times, which is also something that I've never considered. Uh, like. Uh, I do the same thing pre six o'clock in the morning if I'm going somewhere and my daughter keeps asking when others are breaking rules, you're saying this is allowed. How is it allowed at six in the morning? 
I said because everybody does it in their own. She said, but everybody does it, but it's still wrong. So that is something I have always justified to myself. But now this is a good, good platform to start considering something on those lines. Uh, another question that just struck me on this journey of self uh, questioning, uh, a quest for knowing. Uh, our tendencies of sorts. Very often we also get tripped by our own self. This was an example where there was an outside uh, force or outside event that at least I was irritated about or I get worked up about. But there are times when I may have tendencies to, uh, to not do the right, right thing. Say, suppose I was the same guy who was breaking that rule I, and I would justify it that I am always short of time, which might be true sometimes. But I am I am really running short of time because I am doing too many things in one uh, day most of the time. But that doesn't take away the fact that I know it is wrong and I am still doing it. And this constant sense of questioning does it affect confidence at times? This I am asking not necessarily for myself, but very often I have seen that the first few steps are quite jittery when you start trying to question yourself on everything. Then what is my motivation? Why am I doing such a thing? Sometimes, sometimes you'll end up saying a nasty thing to someone and then you're wondering, but I don't feel any enmity towards that person. Why did I just be sarcastic or some such? So this, this level of questioning sometimes, do you think it affects confidence? If it does, what are the ways to deal with that part of it? Very interesting question actually. Actually, uh sticking my uh, faces in that sense, uh, you know, the self-doubt uh, and the venting of the confidence that you're saying by constant uh, questioning, uh, would that happen? I would say that uh, what is confidence is also we need to question <laughs> uh, what is it that, that we are talking about because is it that some image of self that we have made and that is getting tricked uh, that that's where that self-doubt is coming about and is there something like that self really actually because that is basically the ego or that image that you have of self and that is what maybe we are calling it as confidence and if we with constant questioning we are throwing those arrows onto the uh, image that we have created about ourselves, yeah. uh, it's freaking that balloon and it's shriveling, um, that's not what it is. In fact, we are questioning all that has made up that ego, that self, that uh, so-called confidence, where did it even come from, so-called, and uh, you know, in fact, this path of questioning would dissolve, so to speak, that so-called image that we have made about ourselves and uh, it is uh, in fact in that nothingness because after you know <laughs> you start breaking and raising of the walls that you have made for yourself called self that goes off then there is emptiness or nothingness so there is no one to get hurt in that sense you know nothing to get hurt right okay uh, let's let me just play the devil's advocate. That's far more easier said than done. Uh, whatever little journey I've had so far, at every turn, uh, the ego starts clinging to that aspect very, very strongly. And uh, there was something that I'd, uh, I used to collect quotes by great people earlier. So one of them was, even if you become the most humble person in the world, something on those lines, you'll be proud of the fact and even if, can you please repeat even even if you become the most humble person <laughs> you will still be proud of the fact and it had hit me very hard because these are these are very subtle things we do not think in fact on the on the journey to self inquiry i think the first thing you think is i am so great everybody else is a fool they don't even ask themselves i am asking so that itself is a big one so, uh, okay, I'll, I'll simplify the question so that it doesn't become mumbo-jumbo. Uh, 
वॉट इज है माई हेड राइट नाउ इज सिर्फ फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए टू इफ पॉइंट जी इज समथिंग वेर यू बिकम नथिंग you started point a being the first time you realize there might be questions that 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 question the i that this is who i am these are am i my father's son mother's son am i my friend's friend am i a boy am i this i am that all those things are there in my head to the point where you become nothing whatever that point would be for anybody uh, which is hypothesis for us as of right now for me at least so there are whatever little journey i have had on this path i have realized at every juncture we tend to stop ourselves because there is the fear of that nothingness or or death or void or whatever word you want to give it because there are no fixed answers there there are no fixed whatever you read so far falls short whatever you heard falls short even if you heard the most noblest of teachings and read the vedas and whatever when it happens whatever little bit happens i think there is this whole scariness that do you want to take a step further or you want to stay there because the comfort zone is in the in the known how do you how have you faced the fear of the unknown in that sense actually uh, every moment uh, you know is unknown territory in that sense Uh, unless we carry the baggage of the past, of our own experiences, of our own um, assumptions and imaginations that we keep projecting in the future of the past, so we are generally, you know, living um, with a dead mind because how the moment is panning out and uh, living, you know, each moment is unique in that space and time. and uh, so you know from it's not necessary i don't look at it as you know uh, point a to point b and i have to gradually go to that point from point a to say b um, in fact the way i look at it it's like unveiling it's like this you know it's not like a process or some method to reach there because when you it because you the way you are looking at it has changed so the attitude of looking at life can change in, and it can happen in an instant it's not like um, gradual reading it's not a gradual thing because when you realize the folly of your own uh, you know conclusions and the opinions the beliefs that you make that itself kind of you know it's like a light in a dark room and then uh, living with that you know nothingness and emptiness uh, is like a river flowing you know it doesn't know where the path is going to unfold but you're just going with the flow and uh, yeah i mean therefore then dying would mean you are actually dying every moment and the birth is happening the next moment because you're not carrying forward anything from the past in that sense so you have the memory of yes you know where you are saying the language that you're speaking all that memory is there but the psychological memory of you know so and so person hurt me and then you would say you remember that it's not that you've forgotten that but you uh, don't let that dictate the next course of action because you see that that person is changing and changing and even if this thing has happened with so and so person in the last you know meet that we had um, so what i mean it either we both are looking you know at the same thing with different lenses so where is it that i am bringing that moving away from the fact and making my own judgment so that is where that you know uh, you keep questioning and dying to that in that okay um that's such a beautiful answer i had many questions which just drowned in every step that you took forward with the words that you used um, okay one very basic question so you you sounding extremely wise so what makes you hassle do you ever get hassle hassle hmm yes yes i do get hassled every now and then actually 
but you know uh, it's not about not getting hassles but after i get hassles uh, is it you know sticking around for long is it you know carrying over for days together or am i like only so that is that is all kind of you know kind of there has been a change in that in the sense that after i get hassled i again look within um, and keep looking you know where is it you know where have i again made those walls um, and created the other in that sense or where have i or in this so is I, I, it's not a path of the self inquiry is not a path where you would have no challenges or you know that keeps happening in the course of life but how do you navigate that is uh, is what kind of theory um, so yeah not, i mean i it has generally doesn't stick around for long so sorrowness is there grief is there you lose your you know death of someone here and all those things are part and parcel of life but how am i looking at that also is something that has made me to move on with life you know that's that's very beautiful uh, i want to bring this up for many listeners that one of the things that keeps happening to all of us when we try this journey of self inquiry is the first question i ask the self doubt so this is also one of the methodologies that works in terms of you keep going back to the source and figuring out okay what is creating the problem and that itself might come up with a solution whenever it comes up it's not necessary that uh the the moment that the problem has arisen you become wise and you know the solution to it sometimes uh there are bad times you may roll longer you may roll in the misery for lesser time but this this should give confidence that you are a work in progress and this wisdom keeps uh building up on its own at some point uh this is something i would want to bring up uh okay now one question that i would want you to go into the past what has made you so wise it cannot be without reason or without any self inquiry so what what prompted you to take this journey of self inquiry uh, is it your basic nature were there circumstantial uh, things events that happened that provoked you if you would want to share anything of that sort uh for me i don't know if i'm wise i mean it's uh, it could be an opinion i so i don't know um <laughs> and it again would say one can question what does he wise <laughs> mean or so um okay let's just, I, let's just put it this journey of self inquiry how did that begin yeah. for you um uh, i think as kids we all are in that mode of inquiry uh because we keep asking questions and i think for me also that claim of curiosity like any other child was there over a period of time yes i mean you know you you know copy stuff from the environment and then you start picking up uh, you know whatever bits and pieces of information that you get from family friends to take it um, i think that's also a part of the progression that happens to many of us where you know our innate state itself is uh, an inquiry one it's not something that we are doing something extra to from outside to you know don a hat of inquiry it's within us and following us like shadow and we that we are going so uh, it's all about dusting off the conditioning rather and uh, that is where it came from maybe um you know the knack of asking questions somewhere or the other as a child was also there and i think it's there for many of us it's only a matter of you know again questioning back whatever uh, the layering that has happened so um, you know i would question about god and all as a child also or even but it's not again if i answer to you this it would make me as someone unique which i'm not because it's for all of us Uh, of all of humanity because of a neural structure to think so that's how um, the, you know we have 
that capacity. So, so I would not go into specific instances about my past that has made me into sure. this because it's nothing to do with a particular person in that sense. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll try and reframe this question a bit. Uh, to give a context, the funny part is your answer has that context as well. Uh, the idea of asking questions and uh, picking up uh, people to uh, speak to me on the values workshop comes from the very basis that we are all normal people going through the same kind of experiences. And uh, with the, with the uh, increase in knowledge or information available to us all the time, I find that a lot of people are getting confused about what self-inquiry is to start with or else uh, are struggling through the same things, but they do not realize there are others who are going through the same path, same journey. And the idea was that if you and I sit and talk on camera about things which are normal, like I spoke to you of examples of crossing the road or traffic, these are, these are things that happen to us. Uh, or you spoke about all of us having the same mechanism inside our bodies to think. Or, so these are universal. The idea was of this question also was to bring up a an event or a or a happening or a or a outlook or a perspective of sorts which is universal and from which this wisdom came. So it was not so much about the story itself, but what is the what is the learning that you got from it. But you gave a wonderful answer, irrespective of the fact that there was no uh, no specific story that you referred to. Um, okay, uh, again, uh, this is what I would call a trick question. How do people around you react to uh, this journey of yours or this outlook of yours? Do you find many people who think alike and who are supportive, or do you find uh, sometimes uh, people would rather talk about shopping and there's nothing wrong with shopping, obviously, but I mean the worldly things, uh, which movie is working and have you seen this series or? I think I've, um, from being mocked about being to questioning myself about everything to uh, someone looking up to you because, you know, they think that you're very intellectual. I've uh, seen the whole uh, spectrum of it <laughs> and uh, in the end it doesn't matter really because and uh, from going to a shopping mall and or attending a wedding to being part of some inquiry this you know hardcore uh, you know interaction and discussion and dialogue about inquiry I think it's happening either way even while shopping and having that you know interaction with your relative it's as much of an inquiry, talking to your neighbor is as much of an inquiry as it is by what yeah. we are doing right now. So there's actually no difference in that sense. And uh, irrespective of how mundane the activity is, and e even if it would mean washing of utensils or something, doing the daily household chores, even yeah. then it's in progress. Yeah. So, uh, because it's a holistic thing, it's not only about thinking, but it's about, you know, all the senses that you are uh, interacting with the environment, the sensations that you are feeling within while you are interacting and from the sensation, whatever perception that you have. So it's a very holistic process which is in motion and uh, you are with that as life goes on wherever you are. So whatever is outside is only incidental again and you, how are you processing it uh, irrespective of what. So it doesn't matter and how people judge you I think that is again something their perspective. I did not believe in that. I can question that also. Okay, one one last question uh, that comes to mind. This this holistic sense that you seem to have about yourself, which uh, has aided you in uh, what I I use the word terra very regularly. Is something that is missing in our uh, fast paced life. Uh, so you seem to have uh, at least some part of it in your life, the way you're speaking about it. 
is there something that uh, comes with practice or or is it incidental how how would you look at it um so you know there are like you mentioned uh, it's that phase that you get and in that phase it's, you know how they say music you know it's that music is the phase between the two notes actually yeah. and uh, you know for something any creativity also to emerge there needs to be some space otherwise if everything is blocked then how can something sprout in that sense and i think it comes back to what we discussed about you know dying uh, to every moment and then so that something new can come up if we are full of knowledge of the past and you know holding on to it and not questioning it then where is that space for that there are for that newness to come in so are we you know even whatever we have accumulated over a period of time uh, it is can we look at it that it is there but it's no longer in the present moment can we look at it with the eyes of again questioning it kyunki jo hota hai aaya hai wo hota rahega aise kyun assume karte hain hum so what therao is again uh, perhaps an after effect it's like a by product that may happen i think not as an intention you know i will bring therao like how you even mention that if you attain a certain thing even then you will feel proud about it that i'm humble so that humility is an comes which is out of intention is no humility at all that you know trying so that is a faking kind of a thing So I think one will not aim for Thayrao. Thayrao may happen as a piper. That and even if it doesn't happen, there's still a lot of chattering in the mind. It doesn't. I mean, it will gradually get dissolved. So it that may not be the focus of. It's been a wonderful chat with you. Uh, one of the rare chats where uh, there's a certain ease of being in the guest. One of everything is so. in fact one of the things that you started with is what you also ended with uh, there was one line that i kind of noticed i said it's is just the same and it's very rare to achieve such uh, like lucky coincidences uh, at least on the podcast itself uh, and with such a short notice like this has to be like a 5 10 minutes notice so thank you and um, i look forward to seeing you again thank you so much yeah. to see you thank you so much